So I've probably gone over 200,000 miles electric since that time from owning Nissan and BMW and Tesla mm -hmm. and solar is just such a natural segue. Recently you've kind of switched yes. from being a Tesla fanboy, not so much anymore. Um, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> sure, how much time do we have? It's been a little while since we've done a solar video, so we're here today with our friend Michael Bainson. We made a video with him a little over a year yeah, and a half ago yeah. about. In this setup, we have a uh, P90DL. There's an i3. Last time that we were here, he had one power wall. Now we have two. And something I'm really curious about is though the power walls come from Tesla, but Tesla can't install the power walls, is that correct? So you have to have an electrical license per state. So okay. Tesla just doesn't have the license in the state of Georgia, so they use third party. And the third parties must go for vigorous training to make sure that they can install. And once they install, they actually have to be the point of contact for all warranty work. Okay. So it's not just a one-time thing for any kind of installer. So was this a difficult process, <laughs> getting them installed? <laughs> I'm laughing because it takes so long to get a power wall. So that one was kind of a um, accidental. Somebody didn't want it and I was in line and they got it for me. It took a year and a half to get the second power wall. And that's not just going online and registering, paying 500 bucks. That's actually going through the installer and working in the queue when they actually get them. The demand is here, Yeah. the supply is here, and that's the issue. Wow, so what do you think can be done to speed that process up? Like what are some of the things that would help? Tell so, the internet. <laughs> so if I was Elon Musk, right? Yes. Where, where would I prioritize? Remember these, uh, the mm -hmm. cells that are in here are the same cells that are in your Model 3. So what do you do? Do you make more power walls or do you make more cells for the Model 3? Or do you make more cells for the power packs because the utilities now want these power walls because they can regulate the grid, they can balance out the frequencies, they can do all these things that were not possible before. But one of the things that I do want everybody to know is that if you're going to get a power wall, don't think it's going to power your entire house. That's okay. number one thing. It only can support essential loads. And a lot of times you need to rewire your house that once the power is gone and the grid is no longer supplying, this power wall can only supply a small amount of power. Like you can run your uh, dryer, you cannot do your AC because all of those things take a lot of power. Mm -hmm. The output of this is five kilowatts combined they're 10, but it still has to be essential loads. How many do you think that you would need so the, the calculator house. that's on tesla.com yeah. is actually very good uh, it can give you some sense the issue is then your personal habits are you running ac at a crazy low temperature mm -hmm. are you charging your three electric vehicles at the same time is the dryer working while the washing machine is on okay. and somebody's blow drying their hair okay one of my biggest um, concerns that i have with the power wall is you cannot charge them on demand Okay. So think of it this way, we, it, it's a Friday, we know a storm is coming on Monday right. and the system hasn't kicked in to bring up power. There hasn't been any sun on Saturday and Sunday. The storm comes, the power is out, power walls are empty. They cannot charge from the grid on demand. Okay, but so the aren't they supposed to know ahead of time? Yes, but you're relying on somebody else, right? Okay. You're relying on somebody else and even if they flip that switch, you still need solar power to charge them. You're not allowed to charge from the grid. There's regulatory approvals and issues that come up with that, but the only electricity that can ever go into these uh, into these batteries are from the sun. You've made some changes also to your house since we've yes. been here last time. So the solar, it looks like, is now more on the front of the house. So what we decided to do, and I'll show you the panels in the back, they were not super aesthetically pleasing. Uh -huh. uh, they had little white lines and, you know, everybody would walk by, of course, they see solar. But what if you can put all black panels to match the shingles on your house? So we put black panels here, added more of them, and moved all of the uh, remaining panels on the east side of the house. Now, normally nobody ever puts any panels on the east side, but we wanted to experiment. And believe it or not, you could see later in the data that they actually produce electricity quite well in six months of the year. So from vernal equinox to autumnal equinox, they're working pretty good. Now, once we go into the winter part, they're not so good. Okay. but at least they're adding some extra energy. Yeah, that's really interesting. And you said something earlier off camera about the pollen with yes. the solar yes. uh, panels. Pollen this year has been so 
crazy that now you have to add a new expense to uh, ownership, which is washing the panels. Now you and I cannot go there. It's scary. So you yeah. actually have to get a service that comes out and they charge you per panel to wash. Wow. I wouldn't have even thought about that, but yes, if you live in the South, Poland is nuts. Uh, okay. The one topic I want to make sure that people know when they add solar to their house, when is your maximum production? It's during the day, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you during the day? You're not at home, you're at work. So in the states that have net metering, it, you, know, you don't really need the power wall because you're selling electricity and then getting it back equally. Yeah. In our state, we're selling at three cents during the day, but we're paying at night 14 all the way to 22 mm -hmm. cents. So without the power walls, you're basically losing money. You actually have to sell 84 kilowatts before <laughs> you start making money. Um, by selling electricity. So it's very sad that we don't have net metering mm -hmm. and our Public Service Commission hasn't done anything about it. Maybe it will change, but once you have a net metering scenario, then at least you know that all the energy that's been dispensed when you get home mm -hmm. and start turning on your AC, you, you're actually getting it back. So one of the things I wanted to explain to people that are thinking about getting a power wall, everybody visualizes this part and they think, oh, this is beautiful, this is all I'm gonna get, but it actually more to it. So I'd like to kind of give you an example of what happens with this little cabinet. And um, Tesla has a fancy name for it, we'll just call it a kill switch. But in essence, it's a safety mechanism that when, let's say we did have that storm on Monday and the power was off, well, you want to make sure when this is discharging electricity, it cannot go back to the grid. And the reason that's important is because if a lineman working on trying to fix a transformer, you don't want this thing discharging 5 kilowatts or 10 kilowatts going back into the grid and shocking somebody. So in order to install a power wall, you kind of have to have this little unit from Tesla. It's fun to watch this yeah. because you can pull data from your solar, you can pull data from your power bill, you can put it in Excel, and you can actually see the patterns. Payback on solar is about seven to eight years. Now what I'm going to tell you is that if you add a power wall, the power wall payback is 20 years so it's not exactly a highly economical thing because all you're doing in in our state is yeah. you're going from 14 cents to three cents right it's that delta yeah. that you're uh, that you're saving and uh, it, it will take forever how but your peace of mind that all <laughs> everything that's been produced by the yeah. sun captured by your panels is yours and it's not going to our utility so i know that you used to have a model s and you've been driving EVs, as you said, for a while now. Um, recently, you've kind of switched yes. from being a Tesla fanboy, not so much anymore. Um, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> sure. How much time do we have? <laughs> um, I'm still an EV fan. Okay. Okay. That that doesn't go away. The ability to drive electric car, to put your foot on the pedal, to have that instant acceleration. Yeah. And it, it's rewarding. Unfortunately, if you've been driving an EV for a while, you also want to say, well, let me go get another car. Mm -hmm. There's really no other car right now to get. So if you've been driving a Model S, let's call it, for example, a luxury segment vehicle for, a, for just a second. You've had it for two, three years, maybe four, and you want another vehicle. What can you get right now? A Jaguar I-Pace, yeah. maybe, an Audi Q8, maybe, or e-tron, a yeah. Mercedes EQ. Those are really not vehicles that are 300 mile range 400 yeah. mile range that have great acceleration so i just kind of started looking around and thinking why am i driving the tesla mm. i like the acceleration it's fast but what am i really in i'm sitting in the car that is 2011 design the ergonomics of that vehicle are so old they haven't been updated right and especially like you drive model 3 don't you feel like the knobs the yeah the the way it's spaced out that's more 2019 right. i think it's definitely due for an interior and an exterior refresh one of the things that other manufacturers do bmw mercedes um, when they want to update a vehicle yeah they update your top of the line car first then they go middle then they go lower when model right. 3 came out everybody's was excited and i'm still is because you know the advent of sustainable transportation that's the motto yeah. of tesla and they did it they've yeah. done it but they forgot about model s and model x owners and when you go on the tesla factory tour they always ask who had the original roadster 
And if you raise your hand, they go like this and say, thank you. Because mm -hmm. without you, we would not have the, the Model S and the next car. I hope on those tours, people ask if you had a Model S, uh, S or X, because without those cars, you can't have the Model 3. Very true. Unfortunately, that changed the market because the Model S used value has just gone yeah. down. So if you have why if you have fifty to sixty thousand to spend, are you gonna go buy a used Model S or are you gonna go buy a Model Three? What, what you're gonna do? You're probably thinking about Model Three because right. it has the latest motors, the latest battery, the latest. Uh, My mother-in-law just said that she literally got rid of her old Model S and got a brand new Model Three. So, so if you if you expand on that, it depressed the used market. Yeah. And unfortunately, when I started making decisions about my Model S, uh, that which was three years old, I was shocked at the depreciation. Mm -hmm. It it is it. I can't even put it on. I can't even tell you on the camera because I'll be. It's so embarrassing, at the amount of money that was lost. But if you look at the auction data, if you look at the private sales, it just depressed market tremendously. Yeah. If they did it. The right way they would have refreshed model s at the same time you know interior yeah. and exterior as they would do model three right that would protect the value of those owners yeah another thing kim a lot of people think like how many panels should i put on my house you know what's the right size what's the right amount um, not all the panels are going to work the same way some will produce more and some will produce less but in this particular design you see a chimney in the front and you think, well, why, why would you put a panel behind a chimney? Because they're not producing electricity, but it just looks nice. It's not a lot of added cost, mm -hmm. but you have a full row of panels versus having one, two panels here. Oh, there's a chimney. We're not going to put the panels and then we're going to put two more. Yeah. And then data actually supports that the sun will shine at some angle. You'll get yeah. some electricity and it'll shine at another angle when it sets so that you will have uh, production. So what uh -huh. websites do you recommend for looking at your roof to see how much sun potential you have? Could you recommend any to the people? Yes, uh, so Google has done a really good project. Um, I think it's Solar Roof is the name of it. Um, but you can go and take a look at your specific house and it'll give you the exact uh, amount of solar you can generate. So that website actually will tell you what you can do as far as um, output. Well, there you have it. And if you guys have any other questions for Michael, go ahead and put them in the comments below and he will be the one probably answering them because he's our expert here today. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video and let me know if you want more solar videos. We'd love to make them. It's something I'm super passionate about and hopefully I will have one on my house one day too. So thanks so much for watching. You know, as fun as this one is to race, yeah. Model 3 is actually doing fantastic on the track. Uh, there is no power reduction. There is no overheating. If you bought that car in 2014 or 2016, you kind of want to go get a new car. Mm -hmm. So you go into the Tesla store. What are you going to get new? More cameras? Are the kids okay? Just... Yeah. Okay. That's the thing in, in the... I guess they're a little older than mine, so I'm always like... <laughs> they, they roam around. They just go. They walk. They walk to school. Free range kids. Free range kids. It's yeah. a whole different thing.